Let's discuss extraction of four impacted wisdom teeth, including sectioning the mandibular wisdom teeth and packing them postoperatively so you never get a dry socket. Now, I'm not recommending you start ex in extracting impacted wisdom teeth unless you have some hands-on training. The objective of this video is to enhance your skills if you already have hands-on training with wisdom teeth extraction or teeth extraction in general. This is an impacted wisdom tooth extraction case. If you would like to see more surgical cases, click on the link in the description below of dentistrymasterclasses.com. You can see here's the lower left and the lower right impacted wisdom teeth and you're not going to be able to extract those without sectioning them. And here's the maxillary left and maxillary right wisdom tooth. And so these wisdom teeth are fairly easy extractions. The maxillary wisdom teeth, you're going to place an elevator right here and turn it and that tooth will just extract distally. These are not hard. The mandibular are a little tricky and require specific sectioning technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to section both the mandibular impacted wisdom teeth in this direction into the frication and take them out in two parts. Once I've sectioned them here, I'm going to roll this piece out and then I'm going to place an elevator right here and roll this piece out. Now sometimes if the the alveolar, alveolar bone surrounds the distal of the tooth, you can't get this part to elevate. And this is a specific technique that you want to use. And you need to create some space here. So don't cut the bone, cut the distal of the tooth. You're going to lose the tooth anyway. All you need is space. So cut the distal of the tooth down to about right here and you'll have space to elevate this part into, but don't cut that bone because that could be painful postoperatively. So local anesthesia, you can refer to that link on how to give a painless and profound dental injection. I'm first gonna cut a wedge back here. Now don't go far to the lingual, you just wanna go to the distal lingual of this tooth. If you go too far to the lingual, you might damage the lingual nerve. And I wanna cut here, here, and then across the distal of this second molar tooth and take that wedge out so I've got space through the gingival tissue and to, to move those pieces. That's across the distal of that second molar and then I'm going to just remove that wedge. Now this is a long shank surgical burr, either a number six or a number four burr. Now, it's very important that you don't reflect the tissue on the lingual if you're going to use a high-speed handpiece. Hand if you do, air can be blown down into that lingual space and you can get an air, it's what's called an air embolism. It's not like an embolism in a vessel. It's just air under that tissue and if you press it, it sounds like uh, packing paper, pop, 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 paper, pop, 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 pop. So don't do that. The way you can use a high-speed burr handpiece is don't reflect a lingual flap. Don't, you can reflect a buckle flap, but don't reflect a lingual flap. Now I'm cutting through the tooth just like I showed you on the radiograph with this long shaped surgical burr. And you want to cut through to the frication. I've already looked at the radiograph so I know the precise angle I want to cut and I'm separating the tooth into two pieces. So I place the elevator between the two pieces and elevated that piece out. Now I'm making a little cut in the tooth, in the third molar tooth on the mesial of that tooth, not the bone, the tooth, to create a little bit of space between that piece and the distal of the second molar. So cut the tooth, don't cut the bone. Just a little bit right there so you can place your elevator and just move that piece out. Move that mesial piece out. So here it comes and be sure to protect the airway with your finger, a retractor, something so that you don't have a piece uh, be aspirated. I'm just elevating that piece. See I'm protecting the airway over here. Then you're going to remove, irrigate, 
and then remove the follicular sac with your rongiers. Be sure you reach in and remove the follicular sac with the rongiers or you may curette. Don't curette the bottom of the, the apical part of the socket because you want to stay completely clear of that lingual inferior alveolar nerve. And then you're going to pack it with resorbable gauze with the Topex and the socket paste on here and you will never get a dry socket. Refer to that link of how to never get a dry socket. In 40 years I've never gotten a dry socket. Then I'm suturing this with 3-0 gut suture and on the mandibular teeth I'm placing one suture just distal to the second molar and I'm placing one suture a little further back, a little further distally to be sure that's nice and the tight. So you can see I've got one there and one there. Now I'm giving an, with each of these I'm giving an intraligamental injection with a 30 gauge needle and sitting S4% plane. It's very important that you inject intraligamentally or you probably won't get these teeth numb. So refer to that link on how to give a painless and profound dental injection. Then I'm making a, a distal buckle vertical incision off the distal buckle of that second molar. Then I'm placing an elevator between the distal of the second molar and the mesial of the impacted third molar and just rotating it out. Now be sure to protect the airway. See I'm putting my finger in here to protect the airway. Those are pretty simple extractions. Maxillary wisdom teeth can either be the easiest or the most difficult extractions. But this is why you, you'd like to extract them on 17, 18, 19, 20, you know, low 20 year old people. If you start extracting them on 35 year old patients and those roots are fully formed, that's much more difficult. The ideal time to extract a wisdom tooth is when the roots are about 25% formed. They're just long enough that the tooth won't roll in the socket when you try to elevate them. But you don't want the roots to be completely formed or it's a much more difficult extraction. So somewhere between say the age of 17 and 25 is ideal when those roots are about 25% formed. They've still got a nice follicular sac around them that acts like lubrication and it's easier to rotate them out of the socket. Then anesthetizing the lower right, and again I'm going to cut it. If you look at the radiograph and analyze it before you start, it's easier to visualize it. So I can see I'm going to have the long shank of my burr coming just off the distal of that second molar down here to the frication. I don't want to cut down to here, only to the frication. I'm cutting that distal wedge. Be sure you don't go far to the lingual. You want to cut to the, the distal lingual of the second molar, angling the barred parker into the bone this way. Then I'm going to cut on the distal of the tooth. I'm just cutting it along the top of the wisdom tooth because it's completely impacted, removing the bone. And then I'm cutting facial lingually to the frication. You want to cut all the way to the frication, but not past the frication. You want to be very mindful of the inferior alveolar nerve. In this distal part of the tooth, I'm protecting the airway here. That part comes out nicely. Then I'm creating a little space on the mesial facial, and I'm cutting into the tooth so I can place my elevator and just roll it out of there. Don't cut the bone, cut the tooth. Here it comes, I'm protecting the airway. Now I've got a little bit of that distal root. Sometimes the coronal part will fracture off of the root. You need to go in and roll that out. Then I'm placing our packing in the socket after you irrigate it out real well and be sure you remove the follicular sac and then suture with 3-0 resorbable gut suture. One stitch just to the distal of the second molar and one a little further distally to have a nice tight closure. See one here and one back distally. Then I'm giving an intraligamental injection of the maxillary right wisdom tooth 
after an infiltration. I'm also giving an infiltration, but the intraligamental is very important if you, so the patient won't feel anything. Then I'm placing the elevator distal to the second molar and just rolling it right out of there. Be careful to protect the airway. Then again, I'm just placing one 3-0 gut suture to suture the flaps of the maxillary extraction sites. Two in the mandible, one each in the max maxilla. Seven days later, the patient returns for socket irrigation. It takes seven days for the connective tissue covering to cover the socket. And so that's why you get a, a dry socket within the first seven days. If you lose part of the clot, you get a dry socket if you haven't packed the socket. Now you only get it on the lower uh, wisdom teeth. You don't have to pack the maxillary wisdom teeth, but always pack the mandibular wisdom teeth. And almost any time I extract a, a, a mandibular molar tooth, I pack it with this packing method and you'll never get a dry socket. But it takes seven days for the connective tissue layer to form. Then we're going to have the patient return on the seventh or eighth day. And this is just a scooch hand plastic syringe they're going to go down the occlusal surfaces of the molar teeth and place that tip in the socket with half mouthwash and half warm water and just very gently squirt a scutan syringe full of that liquid into the socket. And the objective is not to squirt it real hard. They just, the patient just wants to float anything that's in the socket to the top. They don't have to irrigate, do not have to irrigate the maxillary sockets because gravity is working for you. Nothing's going to get in those sockets, but gravity's working against you on the bottom and stuff will get in there. So they irrigate that every night before they go to bed. How long do they do it? They do it until they can't get in the hole anymore. And that's the dental minute these techniques work and they work every time.